Did you ever think you would work for the CIA? No. <laughs> that was not my intention. Um, I grew up in Wichita, Kansas. Mm -hmm. I went to Europe to be at my best friend's wedding. They went on a honeymoon to Italy, and I was there. And I decided I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to go back to Wichita. Uh, wow, okay. Uh, uh, I was in Germany and it was green and beautiful. And uh, so I found a job mm -hmm. working for a bank, Chase Manhattan Bank in, in Germany. And that allowed me to stay. And uh, it's a long story that I'll make very short, but I, I met a group of Americans there. And a year and a half later, I married one of them. And he was a CIA officer. And that was my route into the CIA. I didn't plan it. Wow, did you know he was a part of the CIA when, like, when, how far in the relationship did you know of his job? Oh, well, he proposed to me, and I said yes, and then he told me. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, he was, he was an undercover officer. And, and it's funny, there are funny rules, but um, uh, the CIA has to approve. When you're marrying someone overseas, they have to approve them. I could have been a spy, I suppose. Welcome to my world. Welcome to her world. Do y'all hear this? Oh my goodness. So you were a former chief of disguise. I was chief of disguise. What all did that entail? The, uh, the office I worked in was like the Q in James Bond. We were the Q for the CIA and the intelligence community. So there were different parts of it, whatever you needed, if you needed a bug, if you needed secret writing or a microdot or a concealment device or whatever you needed, you had to come to us and we'll put something together for you. And disguise and documents was part of that. Did your family and friends know what your line of work was at the, all? The friends back in Wichita did not know. I basically <laughs> lost them. I lost those friends. What does that mean? Uh, I couldn't stay in touch with them because they would be like, well, what are you doing in that country? And now you're in that country. And what are you doing? And it was easier to just disengage. I did. So when you were around your friends before the CIA and they said, what you doing? What you do? Did you tell them anything at all? I told them I had some boring job with the government in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and everybody believed that. They didn't that ask was... any further questions no, after that. They, no, they didn't want to talk about it anymore. They wanted to tell me who got married and who got divorced and who had babies. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> regular talk, okay. Regular, regular talk. What's the most memorable moment from being in disguise for you? Um, there were a number of them, but the one, I mean, one that has to stand out, I went to the White House mm -hmm. and I briefed George H.W. Bush, the president at the time, while I was wearing a full face mask. So we're sitting like this close together and I'm telling him, that I'm gonna show him the best disguise that we have. And he's looking for a bag, like, where, where is it? I said, well, I'm wearing it, and I'm going to take it off. And I reached to start taking it off, and he said, stop. And he got up, and he walked, and he looked, and he looked, and he couldn't, he didn't know it was a mask. He wasn't sure what I was wearing. He sat back down, he said, okay. So I took it off, and I was holding it up in the air so he could see it. Uh, my whole head, it had hair and a face, and a neck. So you could walk around as someone else? Absolutely. And that would be the disguise? Absolutely. That was a great disguise. So what are some of the obstacles you face as a woman in a male-dominated field? Um, partly, the men didn't want the women there. It was the biggest obstacle at CIA. In the operational piece of it, where I, where I was, where you're out the door on the streets dealing with foreigners, who are truly risking their lives mm. to work with us. The men said, women can't do that work. The men said, in, your, in, their, in their cultures, you have no value at all. They're not gonna listen to you. They're not gonna think you can protect them. And I won't tell you what I said uh, to them, <laughs> you could tell but them. it started with a B and it, I said that. <laughs> I, I said, you are just wrong. And you know, it was proven correctly. Um, a woman has a power that is not to be tampered with, soft power. Yes. And, and I could do the work as well as the men, and so could some of the other women do the work as well as the men. So we were trying to just break through that barrier. Now, looking back at your unbelievable career, 
What was the most rewarding thing about it for you? Um, my husband, Tony Mendez, he, he was, they made a movie about him, Argo. Tony um, always talked about every once in a while, maybe once in every 10 years, you got to touch the wire working at the CIA. You actually had a moment where you could help move the needle either left or right or wherever it needed to go. You could make um, a difference. You could do something that actually mattered. Mm. You were never going to get rich. But you could walk away at the end of the day or the week or, or your career feeling like you had actually really taken part in your government in a, in a, in a very good way. Wow. That's what I remember. You've done that. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.